Hello everyone and welcome to Advanced Media Podcast. This is a special podcast series introducing the key theme of Cine Tomorrow, the 2024 community event organized by Advanced Media. This event serves as an intersection of digital cinema, virtual production and sustainability in media and entertainment. I am Nadine Zidani and I'm your host for this episode. I'm a sustainability and climate activist based in Dubai. I'm also the founder of Mina Impact, a company on a mission to build the impact ecosystem in the Middle East, North Africa region. Today, I'm joined by Felipe Pereira, a dynamic figure in the cinema and sustainability scene to discuss the audiovisual industry's path into sustainability. Welcome, Felipe. Hello, thank you very much for having me here. It's my pleasure. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And, and welcome to Dubai. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, let me uh, also thank, uh, first of all, Advanced Media, um, not only for inviting me to come here and talk about uh, this very important topic, uh, but also about uh, uh, you know, breaking, uh, breaking the mold a little bit uh, and, and talking about this topic in the UAE, which is still uh, not something that is very well implemented in, in the film, media and TV sector here in the region. Absolutely. And I'm very excited, you know, about having this conversation with you because I don't know very much about this industry, as I told you before, you know, starting the podcast. And I'm really curious and eager to learn more. Mm -hmm. Let me jump in. So our, my first question is about the responsibility of the media and film industry. So can you explain more about what's their role in sustainability? And can you please break down what do we mean by media and film industry? Well, um, I, I, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to use, use, use the term film. But when I mean film, I mean film, TV, uh, corporate film. I mean publicity that you see uh, in the breaks when we're watching TV. So all about this production. Uh, that involves about what you're seeing on, on your TV screens, on your mobile screens. Uh, so I, I'm going to refer it to it as all of that content. Um, the responsibility uh, that this sector has is, is the same responsibility as, as any other sector does. It's, uh, you need to clean up the mess that you do, if you make it, if you make it like in a very colloquial term. Um, and the reality is they, we do leave a big mess behind. Um, uh, and we need to clean it. Like doing a film, doing a TV series, or, or doing a, a, a corporate uh, uh, video, um, it's always uh, um, uh, it's always something new. It's 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 not like what we're talking about. It's not the same thing as doing a table, because a table you, you do go and research and development. You see if it's this is a good table. Uh, okay, it's perfect, perfect design, perfect engineering, and now we're going to do more. And when you do more, you think, okay, let's 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 streamline for it to be as sustainable as possible because we've done one. The second one is going to be exactly the same. So let's let let's do it the best way we can, efficiently. In film, TV, that's it's not like that because we're always in the prototype part. We're always doing something that it's very new. So. In a way, it's a bit harder uh, for you to uh, implement the sustainability practices. But being harder is not necessarily a uh, reason to to, for you to, yeah. to uh, give up on it. You have, you have to do it. And harder is also not very, very hard. It's just that you just need to change your mindset. So the responsibility is you need to, you need to change your mindset. Uh, and you need to... Uh, 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 look at the track record of what you're doing and improve it because the track record is, is not very good. I, I love that you said, you know, about changing the mindsets. Uh, where do we stand right now? I mean, you've been in this industry for many decades. Yeah. So um, where are we? OK, um, I, I, a few numbers that we have is the biggest, the big productions, the tentpole productions, the ones that you see on the cinemas, the ones that are above 70 million, like the big Hollywood films, we're talking about close to uh, 3,000, sometimes more than 3,000 uh, tons of emissions per film, which is 
a very big figure. Uh, I'm, I'm going to break down that number because that number can be confusing to people. It's 3,000 a lot or, or, or not really, but I'll break down in a second. Um, if we're talking about uh, a medium film, like a, 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 a low budget film, it can go from 500 to 1,000 uh, tons of, of, of emissions. Um, when I'm talking to filmmakers, because I, I come from, from, I'm not from an environmental background, I'm from a film background. We're talking, it's like, what does this mean? Is this a lot? Is this, is this too little? Uh, uh, one, one comparison that I usually do is, uh, uh, there's this the Max Planck uh, Institute study that for each uh, uh, ton of uh, carbon emissions, uh, there are three square meters of Arctic ice uh, that, that melts, the summer Arctic ice that melts. So it's not very, very complicated to do the math that a single film uh, will, will, will destroy a very significant part of, of, of ice. So it just, it just draw something on the floor and like, look, this, this is what happens. This is the reality of what happens. That part of Arctic ice will melt. Uh, so, so in a way, that, 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 that does give give, give uh, some sense of reality of, of what we're doing in our industry. Um, and, 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 and I think it, it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, there are paths uh, for us to, to, to improve, and there are things that we can do uh, to change this, change this reality. Um, let me just go, that, go into details that not all of, uh, uh, you know, if in TV and in uh, continuing drama, like, like the soap operas, it's, it's not the same kind of emissions. I'm just giving you the worst figures that we have in this sector. So the worst figures are more from the traditional, I would say, cinema film? Yes. Okay. And, and, and they tend to be mostly, uh, when, when we break them down, uh, they tend to be more about the transportation. Mm -hmm. So um, very, very often, uh, the nice TV series that you see on the platforms, that you, the nice films that you see on, on, on the cinemas or, or, or also in the platforms, um, they, uh, not uncommonly, they're shot in more than one country. Mm -hmm. uh, like, very, very often they do. Uh, uh, very, very often they're shot on, uh, uh, on location. And when they're shot on location, they have these really noisy uh, and really pollutant diesel generators there. Uh, that's, that's the biggest part of the emissions of, of, uh, 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 of a film. And you don't have to, sometimes you don't have to do it like that. There are other ways of achieving your, your, your creativity and what you want to do in that film without necessarily going through that path mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, how to say, uh, 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 trying to put that in English. but. Uh, what I want to say is that there, there are tools of making that more efficient. Uh, if, if, if you, uh, I still haven't talked about this, but because I was, I was saving it to later, but if you have somebody in the film production, because you're doing a prototype once again, if in the pre-production you break down everything and you have somebody there, which is, you can call it a sustainability, but sometimes I say, is it, like, is it, is it sustainability or is it efficiency? <laughs> and sometimes somebody looks at it, it's like, do we really need to go here? And then go back. What, what, what do you mean? We can we can save we can save uh, money, and we can be you know more sustainable. Yeah. Uh, uh, and sometimes it's doing that that kind of work that does make a big change in how uh, how the impact of a film or a TV series is is. Yeah. I love the fact that you know you you, you switch from sustainability to efficiency because mm -hmm. that that talks to everyone. I mean, everyone want to be more efficient. How do people, because you advise them, you mm -hmm. advise, you know, the, the whole industry on how to, you know, adopt more green practices. How do they react? Because, you know, they are very creative people. It's a discussion we had, yeah. you know, uh, together. And, and how do they react when like, no, we, we can do things differently? Um, uh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a step back and, and, and talk a bit about, about who I am, because that's important on this yeah. dialogue. Uh, I don't come from an environmental background. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, I've been solving problems in the film industry for 24, 25 years. That, that's what I do. Uh, I, I see problems, and this one is a big one, and, and I try to uh, help them to, to, to improve 
Let it be in their skills, let it be in their mental health, let it be in the sustainability. Uh, we've organized uh, a couple of workshops about preparing people to be green uh, consultants uh, uh, in film sets, mm -hmm. which, are, which is a person that helps in, 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 in the sustainability of a project, but also in the efficiency, of course. And we've also uh, uh, organized conference for uh, film, uh, film schools, so that in that level, mm -hmm. um, the film uh, teachers can already prepare the new generations uh, for what they, they their, their mindset to be different when they, when they go into the in, into the film into the film industry, um, and that's important. That's important that it's it's film people talking uh, to film people. Uh, it's like we're not. I'm not an environmentalist. I, uh, in, envir I am, but just not in that kind of. Uh, uh, you know the work they do. Yeah, so we can respect the work mm -hmm. because sometimes you're doing you're you're doing this uh, prototype as like oh my god this is a, is a, it's so hard to do and somebody is going to come here and tell me I'm not going to have that in that moment I'm going to go bananas I'm going to go nuts I I I need to have all of that ready for me and sometimes you don't have to. Uh, 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 and, and we'll explain it to them. Like, for example, uh, uh, in Batman, uh, uh, one of the Batman movies uh, with Christopher Nolan, uh, this is very controversial because he, he, he wanted to have all of the 60 skyscrapers in Hong Kong. Uh, and, and there are messages that were given to, to the inhabitants of that, those, those buildings for them to leave all their lights at night. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, turned on. Because he really liked uh, the lights uh, of, of, of Hong Kong. Um, and that was a massive backlash on, on, on the film because why am I doing this? This is, this is, this is not environmental friendly. When you can do this shot uh, uh, with VFX and, and, and save you a lot of money. Uh, uh, and, and sometimes it's, it's, it's talking about this with, with the filmmakers and, and that dialogue uh, can, can, be, you know, can be much easier uh, when it's done by somebody that's not necessarily, it's, it's not, I'm not gonna go and preach them about uh, sustainability. I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say, well, look, there, there are other paths uh, for you to do this, save money and make your story even better, so. Mm. Yeah, we have different solutions. And I want to jump into the solutions because you mentioned one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the solutions that we have today to decarbonize this industry? There, there are so many solutions mm -hmm. for so many problems. So the first, the first big one is transport. So uh, mm -hmm. um, you get one crew completely, you're in France and you get this crew all the way to Romania, for example. And sometimes you don't have to. Uh, sometimes you can just, well, either take a small crew, but even, more, even better than that, you, you can use, for example, virtual production. Okay. Uh, virtual production is, is getting uh, less expensive every year, so it's a, it's a big studio with LED screens, and it really looks like you're there. Like, if, you, if, any, if any of our listeners have ever seen Mandalorian, Mandalorian is mostly done uh, with virtual production studios uh, that are shot uh, right there uh, with the VFX already when, when they're looking at the VFX, not looking at the green screen, which is an amazing technology. What is VFX? Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's the visual effects, those. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that's one of the tools. Another one is, is also quite simple, uh, which is, uh, you know, those really, really dirty diesel generators that when you're shooting on location, uh, and, and they're loud, uh, they're not very healthy. Uh, because if you go by them and you just, oh my God, that, that smells really, really bad. Uh, and there are options for you to go into um, uh, electric generators or biodiesel generators. And there are very, you know, very nice success, su success stories about using those generators, like the Crown uh, from Netflix. They already, they, they, they use that. And, and especially most of Netflix productions that already uh, uh, going for that kind of, uh, kind of solutions. Um, uh, and then you have uh, other uh, tools about working, about avoiding transport, uh, catering also, uh, uh, catering sometimes you have a lot of food uh, for your crew, making sure that that's efficient, you have the food that you need. 
also about where you source it from and also the menus. Uh, if you have beef, beef has a lot, has a much bigger impact than chicken or vegetables. So making sure that your crew understands uh, understands that uh, the choices that you're doing is also for mm. the environment. And if they're not eating beef, it's for a very good reason, for example. Um, there, there, there's an array of, uh, of, of tools for, uh, for um, uh, films uh, to, to do it, like the, the use of, of plastics, even though that's the first thing that people do, and rightly so, uh, but the usage of, of single-use plastics to be avoided on, on a film set, because it's, it's massive. Uh, uh, I, I, I remember uh, in Spider-Man 2, they did a study of how much um, plastic they saved on not, about not using uh, the single bottle plastics and uh, I, I kind of did a calculation because they did the distance if we go all if you put all the bottles lined up they'd go all the way from here uh, to Dubai airport uh, and they didn't use that uh, because they used you know the, the reusable bottles so we have solutions and I think one of the main solution that you mentioned is the that you mentioned, sto sorry, is the, the virtual production. Mm -hmm. So where do we stand in the adoption of, of the virtual production? Uh, we are on a good path. Uh, virtual production is going, it's got two challenges right now. Uh, first of all, it's cost, because it's, it's not as expensive as it was a few years ago, but f to build a studio with all those LED screens, it's still a significant investment. And the second one is having people that know how to work with it, so having, having gurus. But things are getting there. Uh, uh, and, and as all technology, the adoption, uh, the early adopters, they pay a big, uh, 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 you know, the price is more expensive, yeah. but as most people, as, as people are starting to work with it, the price is coming down. And ex we expect to any, any production uh, uh, of a film to use some kind of virtual production in, in, in a few years' time, because mm -hmm. it's going to be very common. Uh, a study done by the Nostradamus report uh, uh, saw that uh, even in uh, one million uh, uh, dollar films that w w that's considered a low budget film that e even that will be uh, will be able to use virtual production. Uh, so we're in a path for that to be uh, more commonly available. Amazing. So we touched upon you know the decarbonization of the industry. How can we reduce you know the the carbon emissions? Um, but I'm thinking as well, this industry has a very important role to play when it comes to storytelling, you know, the narrative, you know, around social and environmental impact. Um, what do you think uh, we can do now to um, use this power, leverage on this power a little bit more? Um, it's, it's, it's a very uh, uh, ironic situation, uh, <laughs> as we were mentioning that. It's, we're, we're talking about um, uh, changing behavior uh, on the, the industry that change, like it's the industry that changes behavior. There's no yes. other industry that changes behavior of people like, like the film and media business. Um, and there's a lot, there's, there's this concept about green storytelling and it sounds scary once again. I've never uh, heard about that. Yeah, uh, it, it sounds scary because mm -hmm. Uh, we go back about sometimes how the producers and the, f and the filmmakers, they, they're scared when they have a green consultant because, okay, I have another person, it's, it's complicated to do. So here comes a person telling me how to do things. And then they hear about green storytelling and they think, okay, so not only they're telling me how to do things and now they're telling me what kind of movies I'm, mo <laughs> I'm making. Oh my God, where is this going to stop? And it's not about that. It, it really isn't. And, and it's also not about uh, doing films that are purely about the environment. It's, it's about incorporating things in your stories uh, uh, that, you know, show a different kind of, different kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you have an example in mind? Um, and that you can have you can have this in, in, in films, and you can have this on TV. Like, for example, there was this um, reality show in the UK. Um, they did a partnership with eBay, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, it was a Love Island 
that was that, that's how, how it's called one of those reality shows and they had a, they had its partnership with eBay uh, and some of the the dresses uh, that the, the the participants were using were were uh, were secondhand oh wow mm. uh, uh, and then they did the study about how did that impacted uh, the viewers uh, and they noticed that the viewers that saw the program they were uh, uh, fifty percent of them actually then used that kind of resource about you know going for second hand uh, second hand uh, products and and the other ones were about twenty five so you see kind of a, a behavioral change in, in kind of okay they 're not necessarily saying that oh you should do this uh, they 're just they're just showing the behavior and and, and that 's what storytelling is about uh, the, what story, green green storytelling is about it 's not about going and preaching to people and, and being uh, paternalistic in a way. Mm. It's not saying, oh my God, you should do this. No, it's that showing behaviors because uh, that's, that's way more powerful than, than for you to point fingers and say, oh, do it this way. Uh, it's very powerful. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, we have all these films that are about, um, you know, the values that we have, it's about saving the world, uh, mm -hmm. it's about being a better person, the good against evil. Uh, and isn't, isn't, isn't the behaviors that we're talking about, sustainability, isn't it good? So it's, it's about putting that idea in, in, in the mind of a filmmaker when they're doing a film, like, this is good. This is as good as, it is enough, as being good to your kids and being good to the world and being uh, 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 a, cool, a good role model, which is what most of the films are about, about, you know, yeah. that, that, that good values that I see. Uh, how more, uh, like, for example, how, how powerful is it for you to have, uh, uh, like, we're talking about this table, like, imagine that uh, in a film scene, um, you, you're going to move and you, you, you have to leave everything in that second. You're writing a story and this is about, okay, I need to take all of this out. Uh, and it's not very uncommon for you to see that and people just throw it away on, on, on the rubbish right in front of the house because you know, that's, that's the next scene. But instead of shooting that, you, you, might, you might shoot of this being left at the door and being taken by a donation or something like that. Mm. that small things like that, small things like that change the way Small we thing, see it. Huge, huge impact, actually. Exactly, yeah. Because uh, it, it's th that because this kind of thing multiplies because a lot mm -hmm. of people see that, and not explicitly but implicitly, mm. uh, uh, and they 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 um, they change behaviors. Um, this, uh, if anybody wants to know more about this, there's this um, institution uh, called Albert. Uh, it's part of the. Um, the BAFTAs, the British uh, Academy for Film and Television, and and they even have a guide called uh, Green Placing, oh. uh, which is a, a a change from the the product placement, uh, 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 because it, it, it's the same kind of concept. If, if you have a brand that it's like a coffee brand or uh, a soda, uh, they had they do the product placement and. And they pay for, and, and and they know that it's better for them to have a product placement than suddenly somebody just turning to to the screen and say, "Oh, drink this. This is very good." Because people are like, "Why are you telling me to drink your? Are you trying to sell me that?" That's yeah, it looks like an ad. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that. I don't want to do that. Now I want to move away from that. Mm -hmm. So if I turn, if you turn and say, "Oh, go and have this behavior," or "Don't drive that car because that car pollutes a lot." Uh, people are not going to do that, but if you if you show a different behavior, uh, that's much more powerful. Also, in the green storytelling, that w w one of the issues uh, that we have is uh, how successful how, how success is portrayed, because uh, always the aspirational lifestyles that we see in storytelling uh, are very carbon intensive yes yeah so w what is success is it like finishing the film and going to uh, a, a private island on a private jet is 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 that what we want or or maybe success is something different so mm. uh, 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 
success is uh, driving a Lamborghini, mm. uh, or sex, but or success is something different. That's that. That's a question for us as a society, but also a question for us as a society that film has mm. a lot of power. I mean, what you just said is fundamental. Like, I mean, the placement of products and all of that. I, I mean, I kind of realized the impact, but not as well the the storytelling and and as you said, how we portray the, the success uh, in uh, in in films. But this requires a total change of of mindset and a deep sense of responsibility as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Where um, do we feel? that is part of our responsibility or we're we still, you know, seeing some, you know, reluctance or uh, nervousness, I would say. It, 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 uh, it depends on how we take the question. Um, filmmakers uh, and directors, you know, they are thinkers. Mm -hmm. They're, in a way, philosophers of our time. Um, and, and most, if not all of them, they, they want to have a positive impact in the society. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of our human nature. And, and they're the biggest storytellers that we have. Uh, I think a lot of them are still not aware of this. Mm -hmm. But when they're aware, I think it will be natural for them to, OK, let me think. Let me stop and think, because they're they're very good at that. Mm. Uh, and the, when they stop to think, is, is this really the message that I want to go through? Bec I, I want to I I put through in my film? Mm -hmm. Because all the other messages tend to be very positive, very good. So why not include small details that change the world and change the behavior of my viewers for something that I also think that's very good on top of the other things that on this message of this film are very good. So I think that will happen. It's just that the way that it's packaged mm -hmm. is, is, is still difficult because mm -hmm. we go back to the beginning. If we call it green storytelling, it sounds Scary. that we're meddling in their creativity yeah. and we're not. Yeah, and it comes back to their impact. I think having the discussion with them about you know the impact and the impact of the film they produced that's a completely different story. Yeah. Uh, um, this, the, the, and not only in film. Uh, I, I recall uh, uh, um, in, in, in soap operas, because soap operas are uh, very popular, very popular mm -hmm. uh, especially in, uh, um, in, 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 in realities of society that uh, don't have as much access, access to information as others. And, uh, and, and, and in soap operas, you can really uh, put this kind of positive message. Mm -hmm. And it's, it has happened in the past, not necessarily always environmentally, but even in terms of social, there's this institution that tries to go to impoverished countries and put positive messages uh, uh, in, their, in, their, in their soap operas to improve the society. So there's, there's, there's a lot that, that, that can be done in that sense of incorporating children uh, content, mm. but children content does tend to have historically uh, that positive uh, message in, in, in a relatively good percentage of. I, I feel it's more product. advanced yeah. than the, the film industry. It is. Coming back to um, students, mm -hmm. and um, how can we uh, prepare the future generations, the future you know filmmakers, the people who will work in this industry? into incorporating you know green practices as you you know rightly explained to us in this podcast but more as a standard like part of the work they do um that's it, it it's it's going to the universities okay. um, uh, and that's 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 a that's that's work that you know some of universities are doing quite well uh, universities in the film in the film industry tend to sometimes be not up to speed w with what's happening uh, but in this case, they're more advanced of what's happening in, in the film industry. So uh, uh, they tend to be, can start to be very well prepared, especially some of the ones that we've been working with. However, uh, that's, gonna be, that's not going to be fast enough 
Mm. Uh, because if you're coming out of the university right now, you start working, but you start working in, a, in, a, in positions where you don't have the authority to change. You change your behavior, but you're, you're, not, you're part of a system. And changing the system, it takes time for you to go up the ranks uh, and be able to, to make a systemic uh, difference. So, so we need that approach, which is extremely important, but also need the approach, the most difficult of them all, which is changing behaviors. We're talking about not changing behaviors because they'll always have this kind of behavior when they're coming out of the university. Then we have these people that are already working, they need to change behaviors. And, 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 and we need to do that. Mm. We cannot wait, even though they will change, but we cannot wait. That's not going to be fast enough, unfortunately. Mm. And, and one way, I'm sorry, I'm going off track a little bit, but one way of doing that, of having uh, the people already in the film business to change, is that saying also to them, it's like, you're not only doing the right thing, not always, but very often you're saving money. Mm. Uh, and, and That's a good narrative. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's like, why not change? Mm. It's part of our human nature because changing is difficult. That's the only reason, because it's good and saves money. So there's no reason for you not to do it. Uh, and, and the case study of, once again, to the amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, uh, that they implemented all the sustainability practices uh, on the film. And uh, not only they did this very environmentally responsible uh, film, but they also saved about almost uh, 400,000 euros on, on the production budget. That's, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so why not do it? It's just like, you have to. So efficiency, cost reduction, that's definitely you know, a good way to start the conversation with people in the industry. We are nearing the end of the podcast. Uh, do you have, I'm sure that uh, you know, um, some of our listeners are from the industry, mm -hmm. and do you have any advice for them willing to learn more and see how they can implement those practices in, in, in their job? Well, the first thing is that you cannot improve what you cannot measure. Uh, so the first thing would be to start looking at what you're doing, uh, and there are tools for you to use, like the Green Production Guide, uh, and the Albert uh, website that they do have calculators. They can go there and try to see how you can uh, how to measure, start measuring it, even though if it's a very more rudimental uh, way, but you can still start doing it. Um, so I think that's 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 the first part to use these tools to uh, to start seeing exactly what you can do, and then start working with with uh, a green consultant. I'm, I'm not. I don't think there's maybe a couple. Here, uh, in the region, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there are, uh, but in Europe, you, you have you have a few. So if you start working with them, they can start uh, saving you money, uh, making your production uh, more way, way more sustainable, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and be able to 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 achieve goals. Because uh, as as a, a friendly reminder to all the filmmakers that are listening, you will have to do this eventually. Because if, I, if you're either working, doing publicity, the people who hire you will start asking, is, your, is, is this film sustainable? And it's the same thing as when you're asking for a Uber. Sometimes you, you see a Uber, you see, is this, you can, you can either order an electric vehicle or, or the, a regular vehicle. And, and they will go mm. for the sustainable practice because mm. that's gonna be the standard. If they wanna work, for example, in a streaming platform, the streaming platform will demand for them to be sustainable, will demand for them to be a sustainability path. If they want to apply for a fund to do a film, funds are already now implementing this, this, this uh, 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 demand that's mm. like, you need to have a sustainability practice in your film, otherwise we will not give you money. Yeah. And this is starting, this is a trend. So. If you don't start adapting right now, when these practices are going to be more common, you're not going to be you're going you're, you're going to be behind. You're not going to be competitive. So the earlier, the better. The earlier, the better for you. Yeah. Mm, and not waiting for the pressure coming from other stakeholders. Exactly. 
Thank you so much for this conversation. Like I feel, you, I feel you know, I, I discovered a new universe. Thank you for uh, sharing with us, you know, your expertise.